The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. There's uh, any number of kind of straightforward understanding application of the, of the particular gospel that we have today, but uh, St. John always seems to make it a little bit more difficult than it has to be. I don't, it's, um, it's, we don't recognize it, I think, at first, but it's a poetic language. Um, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, a, it's very dis- descriptive, um, say, pictorial language, and it kind of, it, it can create a bit of a, a, a separation between, like, the, the real clarity of what Jesus is saying, and then, like, how we understand it, because it's hard to, it's hard for us to, to make that kind of 2,000-year shift in, in context and still get what, what Jesus is saying. And also, you know, the reality is, I think, whenever we proclaim the Scriptures in assembly, just as just happened, um, we, we, we put on our own kind of set of lenses uh, that, uh, that have us interpret what's going on in a way that isn't, that really doesn't reflect what was going on at the time. And Jesus is, yeah, he's launching something of a rebel movement, right? Jesus is, um, he, he's not launching a, it's not a, it's not a political movement uh, like in itself, but it has massive political ramifications. So, and, it, you know, in this, in this context, Jesus is pushing out with a, a way of life. It's a big part of his renewal agenda. Uh, but there are people who are on one side and the, and the other for him. But, and he has to drive through. Right? He, has to, he has to persevere in his way, even though it's, it's clear at this point that uh, at least the, the Judeans are not coming along with him. It doesn't mean that then he, he can be sidetracked in any way because he knows that, like this, this connection, we see it in, the, in this passage, he's doing simply what the Father has, is asking him to do. He's, he's simply um, aligned with the will of God, with the will of his Father. So, and that, that close connection then is, if it's not on the surface as it is here, it's, it's, it's just below the surface in every other part of, of the gospel. It's that Jesus is, is doing the will of the Father. And people are supposed to then be able to look at him, look on him, and come to know the Father. But here in this passage, and we, we've seen uh, passages previous, the, the Judeans, and I'm using that because I think it's a better translation than, than the word the Jews, because it's really, um, it's a regional kind of distinction that's being made and not a religio-whatever distinction. But the, Ju- the Judeans are, are against him. Almost uh, one of the primary reasons why they are is because they have, a, they have a concept of God that they're not willing to let go of. So you have, you have Jesus in front of them, 
who is, in fact, the living and true God, translated into human terms, if you will, right, made flesh, and you have the Judeans who are not, who are not willing to see God in any other way than the God that, I won't say that they made up, but like the God that they think exists. And this is, this is like a massive uh, conflict here. And of course, Jesus, when he's calling them out, he's saying, you know, you belong to what's below. Like, you, you're worldly. You're not seeing things the way that God sees them. But I'm from above. So, what, again, what he's doing is bringing to life the way of God. And, and um, uh, act, how do you say, act, actualizing his plan. Actualizing God's plan. But they can't, they can't. They can't see it. And so, like, they, because of what they're holding on to, they can't, they can't see it. They won't see it. They won't go along with him. So therefore, they will die in their sin. Right? They're, they live um, in a state of rebellion against God. And that means any number of things. And here, in, a, in an immediate sense, it means that they're refusing the God who is making himself known to them in Christ Jesus. So they're living in rebellion. But the, the only way... I don't know, the, the only saving way, the only, the only way for them to be rescued is for them to trust and follow God who is revealing himself to them in Christ Jesus. So they will die in their sin. So this is a moment we see that God's judgment on the world actually comes up into the present in the person of Jesus. And the, and the question here, just like we see in any number of other parts of the scripture, is whether or not Jesus is at the center so this is like, get to, get to like slowly my exhortation for the day, which is my exhortation, you know, every day for six years, six and a half years from this pulpit, is that Jesus has to be at the center. And that's your choice today. That's your choice today. Is Jesus going to be at the center of your life? Or is he not? There was, a, there was a harsher way to say that. Do you, you want to hear it though, right, Ron? Yeah. You, it's um, Jesus at the center of your life or you will die in your sin. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean simply like when you die, you will, you will be condemned, whatever, like that kind of thing. I mean that you don't, have, you don't have access to life now if you don't have Jesus at the very center of your life. And you will go the way of death today if Jesus is not the very center of your life. But if he is, you have access to life. If he is, you, if, he is if Jesus is the very center of your, your heart and life, you have access to the divine love. Right? The, the, the creative force that brought all things into being, the, the redemptive force that seeks the rescue of the entire world, you have personal and privileged access to that in Christ Jesus. So it's, it's an op another opportunity, again, in, in Lent, we're focusing, we're focusing as, as much as we can, right? Jesus, we need to be Jesus-centered people. And if we're Jesus-centered people, then uh, we, will, we will be rescued by the life and love of God, and we will be set on his rescuing mission. I don't really want to consider the alternative. That's it. Jesus at the very center.